good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first announcement, I would like to start our meeting, making some announcements. We will get together on Easter Sunday, 11 a.m. for the service via Zoom, including Love Feast. So please don't forget to be prepared for that service. Bring along a glass of juice or water, as well as a piece of cake, cookies, or biscuit. However, for today, let me remind all of you that after the closing blessing by Reverend John Ritchie, we end the service in silence and leave the Zoom room as soon as possible. So don't forget that. We end the service in silence and leave the Zoom room as soon as possible. So let's get our service started. On this day, we gather to remember Jesus, our Savior, who loved us and gave himself for us. Let us draw near in full assurance of God's endless love and mercy. So, according to the gospel, they took Jesus and he went out carrying his own cross to the place of a school called in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him. This is not a day for mourning, but for all wonder, love, and gratitude. All you who bow in reverence, praise him. All your daughters of faith, glorify him. All you sons of faith, stand in awe before him. We give our thanks and praise to Jesus Christ who carries our sorrows, heals our wounds, and redeems us from sin and death. Let's pray. Gracious God, on this day, we gather through the screens of our computers and mobile phones to remember the suffering death of Jesus. He was despised and rejected, oppressed and afflicted, yet he was prepared to be wounded for our transgressions. We come overwhelmed by the death, by the depth of Jesus' love for us and his commitment to defeat evil, even when that meant his own suffering in his own death. In his willingness to make us righteous, he poured himself out to death, even death on a cross. And so, in response to such love and sacrifice, we commit ourselves as his disciples to overcome evil with good, suffering with wholeness, in oppression with justice. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our first hymn this morning is number 263 of Singing the Faith, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Highest.
what is with you. Bless you. So we continue in prayer. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Holy One, we sing our hosannas as we lift our hearts full of praise. And yet we recall this day, this day of all days, to be a solemn day. It's a time to recall your sufferings, your humiliation, pain, despair, and death upon the cross. Which was both terrible and wonderful. And for this we praise you. We thank you for your self-giving love. Yours is the love that fills us with wonder and gratitude and with solemn joy as we recall you, our crucified Messiah, who died in our place on the cross, dying for us and for the world you love so much so that we might be forgiven. Lord Jesus, in gathering before you, separately, but also together, we do so to acknowledge our unworthiness and to seek your forgiveness. Forgiveness because of our failure to follow you. Failure to do as you commanded by picking up our own crosses for the sake of others. So Lord, this morning we bring our sorrow and regrets for the times that we've caused hurt and pain to others. For those times that we have neglected to care or act towards those most in need. And for each and every opportunity and skill we have wasted. So in the silence of our own hearts, let us seek our own forgiveness for those things which we have done. Lord God, we turn to you and you welcome us. We come as we are and you make us whole. In awe of your mystery, in the person of Jesus, you have shown us your face. So thank you for your perfect forgiveness that we find in you. Teach and help us to forgive ourselves and others. Help us to keep living as your people, that the world might know your name and be glorified. And as forgiven people, we pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now Paolo is going to bring us the gospel reading for this morning. The gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel of Mark chapter 15, verses 16 to 39. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews. Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff, 
and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country. And they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by her hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, so you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. This is the word of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Before the reflection, we'll sing, sing the faith, number 270, come and see, come and see, come and see the King of Love. Come and see, come and see 
Come and see the King of Love. See the purple robe and crown of thorns he wears. Soldiers mark, rulers sneer as he lifts the cruel cross. Lone and friendless, now he climbs to. I worship, I worship the Lamb who was slain. Come and we, come and we, come and mourn for your sin that pierced Him. So much deeper than the wounds of thorn and nail. All our pride, all our grief, all our fallenness and shame, and the Lord has laid the punishment. By love's pure stream, for us he was made sin. Oh, help me take it in. Deep wounds of love cry out, Father, forgive. I was.
So we continue in worship, let us pray. Lord and gracious God, for those words of scripture, we give you thanks and praise. For the spirit that inspired the writing, we give you thanks and praise. And we pray now, by your same words and same spirit, you come to apply their truth to our hearts. So may the words of my mouth the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord. In the precious and in the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So what a difference a few days makes. Last Sunday, the crowds had welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem and he received their thanks and praise and they had hoped that Jesus was their Messiah. And yet Jesus' triumphal entry, he knew in his own heart of hearts that he was orchestrating his own death. You know, the events throughout Holy Week leading to this Good Friday, one cannot fail to be moved by the horrors that Jesus encountered when acts of betrayal and the choices made by Jesus' closest friends, the state, the religious authorities, and ordinary people, all of which conspired to kill Jesus. You know, that horror for Jesus became all too real when having entered the Garden of Gethsemane to pray along with his disciples who he asks to stay awake and watch while he prayed. Of course, we know how the story unfolds. Jesus sweats blood, prays that the cup of suffering be taken away from him, but not my will, but your will, he says to the Father. All this while the disciples sleep like babies. One of Jesus' disciples had already betrayed Jesus to the authorities, leading them to the garden, where then he betrays Jesus with a kiss. The betrayal and the choice made by another of Jesus' friends, who was to deny ever knowing him three times before the cock crowed. And finally, the betrayal and the choices made by his friends who ran away at the hour of Jesus' sorest need. You know, I wonder if we could imagine, let us try to imagine that we're watching those proceedings unfold. We're standing alongside the disciples, watching on as Jesus is arrested. We then listen to the charges brought against him. We witness the trumped up trial that follows. Imagine that we are watching Jesus's humiliation and the crowd to betray and the choices they made as they chose Barabbas to be released when asked, who should they let go? With one voice, they cried out, to crucify Jesus. Imagine how they must have felt watching him being spat upon, being beaten, and then try to imagine being one of those disciples that led Jesus to his arrest and the humiliation in which the state, the religious and the ordinary people combined joined forces that sentenced Jesus to pain and suffering of death on the cross. Let us now move forward 2,000 years and through modern media, recall some of the events happening around the world today. Try to imagine the different acts of betrayal and choices made by government leaders throughout the world, which had led people to tragic events of war, to people's disfigurement, 
caused by the bomb and the bullet. That have been caused many thousands of people to be trapped in their bombed and destroyed homes and hospitals. Their betrayal and choices made have caused people to free, flee from their homelands, to become refugees. You know, we could spend forever and a day adding other choices to that list. And today, of course, we could add the global issue of pain, suffering, death, owing to the COVID pandemic. In many places, made worse by the ways different states, governments have approached that pandemic. We could even add that today, even the Christian church and we as individuals still betray Jesus by the choices that we make. I mentioned this the other week by nursing grudges or resentment or anger, fear and disappointment or regrets, guilt or envy or need to be right or in control, our need for approval and perfectionism. All this stuff betrays and metaphorically speaking continues to crucify Jesus today and every day. And all in all, this serves to remind us that we are still living in a Good Friday world. You know, and there are many today, and thank God for them, may even equate their sense of suffering parallel with Jesus' own betrayal made that led to their own pain and suffering. You know, I have little doubt, even the small gathering we have here, if we were to write our own life, individual life stories, some may resonate. And not to sound too pious, might even identify themselves with the human character of Jesus himself. Because some, just like Jesus, have suffered a variety of abuses. Some through physical and emotional anguish that's caused pain and heartache. Some including mental anguish owing to a betrayal and the choices made by those who are supposed to have loved them most. Some like Jesus have experienced the injustice of slander, gross misrepresentation of being accused of something they have either said or done that brings one character into question. Some, like Jesus, have the capacity of reaching deep within themselves to forgive others that have wronged them. And thank God there are so many people who, because of their great capacity to love and forgive, makes the world a far, far better place. You know, every human life is full of intrigue and mystery. Every human life has a great capacity to love and to hate, often with the same degree of passion. Many people live lives that are full of heartache and suffering and contradiction, owing in part to the acts of betrayal and choices made by people within their close relationships. Whether this is the relationships between parents and their siblings, friends, business partners and associates, even acts of betrayal and choices made by a close friend, even within church communities. You know, I've sometimes wondered whether Jesus' real pain and suffering was less about the physical crucifixion of nails being driven into him and more about the pain and the suffering of being betrayed by his closest friends. And even in that story that Paolo read, even believed he was abandoned by God himself. My God, my God, why have you, why have you, God, forsaken me? I have done the journey. I have run the road. I have been with people. I have healed people. And now you, at the last, have forsaken me. Of course, we can make up our own minds on this matter. You know, but the real good news is that it is because of Jesus 
we can move beyond the pain and suffering of a Good Friday to the joy of resurrection. We can discover that our own pain and suffering need never have the last word. Because of Jesus, we ourselves can discover that betrayal and the choices made by those who claim to have loved us most can be overcome by our act of love. Jesus's act of love was not an emotional thing. It was an act of will. And because of Jesus, we can discover how even when we have been slandered, misrepresented by others, we can still forgive. Because of Jesus, one can discover and know we are a people who are constantly forgiven by God. Because of Jesus, because of Jesus, we can discover that God's forgiveness can be made known to others by our act of our own forgiving. Because of Jesus, not one other person need be sent to a wooden cross, condemned for one's sinfulness. Because of Jesus, one can discover never needing to feel ever again God abandoned. You know the great eternal truths of scripture, that within every Christian or otherwise can find their own life story, the good, the bad, and the downright ugly, through the characters we find in those passion narratives. Within each and every encounter, we can begin to understand and to discover how negative forces of the world that acted upon Jesus, an innocent man who suffered every imaginable amount of treachery, of betrayal, denial, phony trials and beatings, and finally the pain of Good Friday ends, apparently in failure. But we who know the story well and know that pain and suffering was not the end for Jesus. For Jesus, this all leads to a wonderful and beautiful new dawn of Easter joy. We are a people who remain, and ever thus so, living in a Good Friday world, in which we can deal with the negative forces of pain and suffering in one of two ways. We can either allow that pain and suffering of Good Friday to always win, and therefore suffering will always have the last word. Therefore, in those situations, nothing ever gets better. Or we can accept that whatever the tragedy is in life that has befallen us as Christians, the Christian message remains one of hope. Hope that there is always light at the end of the tunnel. People are able to discover the joy of living lives in the light of the Easter joy, sharing in the resurrection with Christ. In Christ, one can discover a new life of love, forgiveness, grace, and mercy towards others and for each other. Good Friday, rather than being a tragedy, is a solution to a tragedy. Good Friday and Easter Day are inextricably linked. Both are about hope. The hope pouring out of the events and despair of Good Friday is the one that leads to the resurrection joy of Easter. Discovering this is how the early church grew, spread by people's testimony of the risen Jesus, who themselves lived first through that first Good Friday. And just to conclude, some may know the name, Professor Yang, who wrote about Christianity in China. He says that the present growth rate, there will be about 160 million Christians by 2025, and 247 million Christians by 2030. So we no need to longer wonder about Good Friday with such a heavy, heavy heart. 
Good Friday being the solution, we might ask ourselves, what kind of love is this? What kind of love is this that gave itself for me? So let us pray. Lord Jesus, what kind of love is this? It's a love that we marvel at. That you lay down your life on the cross. For us and for the world that you love so much. So now, in your name, we make our prayers. Lord Jesus, on the cross, you willingly forgave all who mocked and jeered you. So we pray this morning for those who refuse to recognize you as king or to own you as Lord. We pray for those that despise what is good and rejoice in what is unworthy. We pray for every eye to be opened and recognize your dying love so all hearts may respond to its transforming power of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, on the cross, 
you asked the disciple you loved to take care of your mother. So we pray for those whose grief makes them feel vulnerable and disadvantaged. May they discover the strength and comfort of your eternal presence in and through the care and compassion from within every Christian community. Especially the Christian communities of Hackney and Stoke Newington. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, on the cross you forgave a common criminal crucified with you, offering him a place in your kingdom. And so we also pray for all those who feel unworthy and rejected, who are left on the margins of society. May each and every one know of your welcome, love and acceptance through the ministry of your disciples and your disciples here now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord Jesus, on the cross, a Roman soldier recognized what others fail to see and praise God. So we pray for those whose faith is growing, who are at a point in their spiritual journey and now see you. May they move onwards in the Christian life as they learn more of your love and enter more fully into your risen life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord Jesus, on the cross, you were obedient to the will of your Father, facing death to win eternal life for us and the world. So may your love continually dwell within us, strengthen us to follow your example of selfless love and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Jesus' sake, amen. When I survey the wondrous cross. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the
Love demands my soul. My life, my own. So let's go out into God's broken world in that amazing grace, in the power and in the strength of the one who was broken. Let us stand with the oppressed in the shadow of the one who died for justice. And let us live the life of love until the God of love shines in our lives. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon each one of us, upon all the people whom we love and care for, and the people we still find difficult to love. May that peace be upon us all, this day and every day and forever. Amen.